So with all of our colors now made, I'm going to start creating the backdrop to the artwork, which is in the form of some big blocks of color that's used in this article. So um, here I'm going to hover over and double left click on the numbers two to three, just to make sure that I jump to those pages. I do need to be working on a spread. Then just make sure that at the very bottom left hand side of InDesign, it does read in that, should read, read page two or page three. Uh, we've got it nice and clear on, on view and then I need to pick up the rectangle tool from the tools panel. If it's not visible, click and hold down on whichever tool is visible. Um, it's right in the middle of the tools panel and, um, and then hover over and left click on rectangle. Before I draw the shape, I want to then go to the fill icon, drag down to pick TAB blue, press return, then click on the stroke. I don't need a stroke for this. So I'm going to click on none and then hit return. Um, before I draw, oh, almost did it. Uh, click on the layer called images to make sure that's active and that's why it'll deposit the artwork and then head up here at the top right corner of the margin and then drag across just to start off with uh, to get the overall uh, height right in there just to get the, the shape onto the uh, onto the page in there. So you will have to switch to the selection tool to be able to move and alter the size of this. So the height is in the place where I want it to be um, but I need, do need to change the width in here. So I'm going to drag that all the way out to the bleed line and then I'm going to drag the middle handle on the right hand side to the center of the spine. In terms of the height of this, well, so I've already mentioned the top of this box is where it needs to be. But if I hover over the bottom middle handle, the height of this needs to be roughly 86. If I just drag down in here, when in the tooltip in the widget that's next to my cursor in here, I can see 86 there, thereabouts is the right kind of width and height for that. Um, they're then going to drag this swatches panel out of the way. And in fact, you could just get rid of this if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to leave it on screen just for now. I will then go to, um, I've got my selection tool active, hover over the blue rectangle, hold down the alt key to get the duplicate symbol, keep the alt key held down, click and drag towards the right hand side, let go of the mouse, let go of the alt key afterwards to create a duplicate. And again, I'm just going to drag this into the top corner of that margin so that the positioning of the height is where I need it to be. I'm going to pull this one back in this case because it doesn't need to be all the way across in there. I'm going to pull that back to here just for now. And then I'm going to pull this into the center spine, but I am going to change the height. And the height of this one needs to be around about 66. So I'm going to drag this upwards in here. When I see something like 66, there we go, 66 point. 569 um, is about right for what I need. Uh, if you can, if if ever possible, try and create your objects so they are separate on the left hand side page and the right hand side page because it may well be rather than putting one great big box across here, if you can split it down the middle and if you do end up moving your pages apart, then the content that's on the left hand side and the right hand side of your page will shuffle around in the page order and it won't be pulling stuff across from opposite pages that you don't win, wish it to. So that's why I've created one box on the, on the left-hand side page and another box on the right-hand side, other than the fact that they are both different heights and widths. So I've now got a, a decent kind of backdrop to put all my text across in there. I'll click away from there. And the next thing we'll do then is um, we'll start putting some text in. 